iPhone 7 Plus, a little bit uh, of a delayed review here and unboxing. It's the jet black model that I ordered and I took it right to Steve Jobs' house. Right there, yeah, what would he have thought? And then we'll take it later to NASA's supercomputer division. Well, not quite, but a little exhibition there. I'll show you some photos, hard handles in low light. Um, and we'll even chase a Google car. Um, I wasn't really up for getting it at the Apple store. The party at that time was a little bit too intense for me. So um, remember, you have the option to order this to your doorstep. That's what I did. Came and I ordered a case and a dock. And uh, I really like that blue case. I don't know, there was something about it that I really like. Uh, but that is not the point here. Just give you a quick unboxing so you see how the box is supposed to look like. Should you order it? Should you buy it from somebody? Making sure this is the real deal black box and um, just immediately a beautiful beautifully crafted phone I'm more of an Android guy but nothing to argue here once you pick it up you know this is some some good engineering um, now the headphones have changed a little bit yes we did get they did get rid of the headphone jack and it's now done uh, with a lightning connection and one of the good things is now you're moving the digital to analog conversion away from the phone. You're moving it to the headphone. Uh, there is a converter built in. Nice blue case. And I like that the converter is actually far away. It's less interference. So I have no problem with that. Most people will probably have a problem with getting rid of that headphone jack. But we have now a digital connection. I liked it a little bit better. Here compared with the iPhone 6, uh, I'm sorry, with the Samsung S6, it's a little bit, uh, depends on, on how you hold it, a little bit thinner, I would say, about the same. It's a thin phone, but it's a heavy phone. It got heavier, um, especially with that motor on that um, um, Touch ID there. Um, there's nothing to click anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a big phone. Setup is a breeze. Um, fingerprint has gotten fa faster as well. And so we're setting this up. So this is when you set up the phone, you're supposed to put in a couple of fingerprints or just one. I do one for each hand. And then you put in a code to have a fallback security. Now, before we get any further, let's compare it to the iPhone 6S Plus, which one's faster and if there's any obvious differences, loudness, volume, and so forth. Got my buddy Will here. Nine versus ten. Oh, nine looks better with the larger, the larger uh, iOS album nine cover. Versus iOS ten. Notice that the album cover looks bigger on iOS nine than on ten. We're going to compare the volume loudness here really quick. the button. It doesn't move on the thing. Oh. Let's try that it's louder. Again. Yeah. But look how slow and unresponsive it is there. A uh, significant difference in volume. Also, here's stereo. The screen is unresponsive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Alright, and now a couple of comparison fingerprint ID well, on the right hand side jet black the news 7 plus is faster you can see that immediately um, see how it responds with the camera yeah still the advantage here just a tad tad faster oh if we compare it here with the Nexus 5X it's got a bright strong screen at first it doesn't look that much better but it's a great great screen uh, this phone is nowhere near as expensive if you compare it to a Samsung OLED screen. I still prefer the OLED for reading. The whites are wider, the blacks are blacker. But uh, make no mistake, the iPhone 7 Plus screen that we're testing here is a gorgeous screen. The colors are very, very accurate. More accurate than on an OLED screen. Uh, as far as zooming and pinching and moving things around, uh, the experience is very, very fast. I did not get into scientifics here to measure that. 
All right, guys, so the iPhone 7 Plus dual camera, that's an intriguing feature. Also the new flash, look how it protrudes out. So let's take it for a test drive, and we did. We took it to NASA, uh, the Exploration Center here, to looking here at the NASA Advanced Supercomputing Division. And look at those first photos in very low light. That won me over right away. And we're doing some video, and um, this is also indoors and not ideal light. Uh, lots of shadows um, and different colors and so forth. I was very impressed right from the get-go. And um, this is also a very low-light situation here in video. And immediately, you can see this camera is no slouch. Everything looks very real. This is pretty much how it looked like. Uh, also, if you compare it to the photo, uh, the still, uh, the video camera is just fantastic video feature. Now, the dual lens, right, with an f2.8, uh, double the focal length, so it's 56 millimeter versus 28 millimeter, allows you to immediately zoom in when you can't get there. If there's a railing or some sort of divider, you can't get closer to this, uh, you hit the button um, on your screen and it activates the other. Uh, lens. I find that a very useful feature here. Also indoors here at NASA. Um, lots of weird objects and it came out beautifully. Uh, some LED lights that very often throws off uh, a phone camera. Uh, not in this case. Um, HDR here looking outside um, at this uh, hardwood flooring. And here we got some video. This is not 4K. This is regular 1080. And again, zooming in. Um, couldn't get out from my seat without looking too creepy on those two on those two people. And um, yeah, that's what you do. And um, really lifelike and accurate colors, uh, especially in video, um, which is harder to do. You know, we're behind a Google self driving car playing with the frame rates and obviously zooming in and zooming out if you need to get that license plate uh, you can do so very quickly with the dual cameras are the dual cameras worth it well that's something for you to judge but for me that would be a great feature that's when phone photography becomes interesting especially for portraits i would use the um, longer lens the one that gets closer and here's some details in photography Look at that beauty, vintage. And um, a new 1.8 camera here. Um, great dynamic range, great resolution, bumped up to 12 megapixels now. Uh, the previous camera, uh, even on the iPhone 6, was already great. Um, could do a lot of things with that. And um, the quality just keeps getting up. Um, Food shots come out nicely, detailed, uh, and there's always some odd lighting conditions in these indoor places, sometimes a mixture of outside light and indoor light, and handles it very well. Also, these colors are very accurate, sharp. It's just a pleasure to shoot with this camera. That was a quick camera testing, especially low light and the ability to zoom in, to switch to that other lens is a formidable option for people who are getting a little bit more serious about their phone photography, so a thumbs up. For me, I really had a blast shooting with the iPhone 7 Plus. Please like and subscribe. Bye.